Hi everyone, it's Sam and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fun. Today I am making a card using the Yappy Birthday add-on and dies, uh, Elephant Parade add-on stamps and dies, Porcupine for You add-on stamps and dies, Porcupine for You, Henry's ABCs, and the Flippy Flappy die. Also not pictured, simply celebrate pets for the little speech bubble. <laughs> my bad. I am starting by coloring all of my images with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers like I always do. And um, I really just use a handful of colors for all of these images. For the greens, uh, the grass is so tiny, which is from the Yappy Birthday add-on, um, that I just use a tiny bit of the darkest on the bottom, a medium shade to soften that, and then an even lighter shade at the very, very top. But again, you could get by with one, <laughs> you could get by with two. I go for three for these small images, but it's really unnecessary. Next, I'm gonna color the porcupine, and I'm using two shades, mustard seed, or just mustard, I'm sorry, and um, natural beige, I think. And I just start by using my darkest color, which is mustard, on all the parts I wanna be shaded. I use my water brush to drag the color out. I go back in those same areas with mustard, and then I use the lightest shade to pull it all out. And that's how I color my images. Next, I'm using two darker and different browns for the uh, little quills, and I'm using the darkest color um, in the areas I want shaded, then you simply using the lightest color to just kind of pull it out. Not even using my water brush for that. <laughs> Next, I'm coloring the heart balloons from Elephant Parade add-on, and I'm coloring them in all different shades of purples, which I forgot to show, but I'm gonna show right now. <laughs> purples, pinks, and reds. And I just am using two or three colors per heart balloon all colored the same way. Darkest shade first, then the medium shade, and then the lightest shade. Sometimes I go back in at the very end with my water brush to kind of even lighten it even more and make the, the shading stand out. Here I'm just testing some reds to see if they work together, and um, they do. <laughs> and I did remember to show. <laughs> Almost forgot though. And um, I'm just kind of testing. Some of these markers are new for me. And so I'm just seeing what colors I have that look um, work well with that color. What kind will kind of change the shade a little bit. I wanted them all to be um, a different shade, like I said, of pinks and reds and purples. So next I'm going to combine the pink and purple. And this is my favorite color of the of the balloons. This is my favorite one. It's like a fuchsia, fuchsia, which is also my favorite color, which is going to be surprising for a lot of people because I really can't stand purple. Like, although it is growing on me. Basically, everyone that I love in my life loves purple as their favorite color, and it's growing on me. <laughs> Next, I just colored the um, stems of all the mushrooms in mustard and natural beige again. And I'm going to color these porcupines. I don't show the colors again because I already showed you with the first one. It is the same colors for all three porcupines. So mustard and natural beige for their bodies. And I think it was mid-brown and beige for the uh, quills. I may call these hedgehogs at some point. I mean porcupines. <laughs> so if you hear me say hedgehogs, I mean porcupines. I've been trying in my head to keep it straight the whole time. Uh, here I'm just showing you the colors I use for the cheeks and the ears because I did forget in the first one. And yep, now I'm just going to color these little quills. Um, same way, just the darkest shade in the darkest, uh, the darkest color in where I want the shade and then the lighter color to pull it out. And then I do go back with my water brush just a smidge. It's very, very, very dry almost um, to make it even lighter. I'm using the same colors I used to do the blush for the speech bubble. And here's my trusty mustard again. I feel like I use it on everything <laughs> um, to color this cute snail, which I don't end up using, but I really, really wanted to. And now I'm coloring the mushrooms. And honestly, I don't show the markers for these, but it is literally the same color combinations as the hearts. So I'm using the same colors with the same combinations to color in all of these mushrooms because I wanted them to be similar 
um, in shades because I already had all the different purples and pinks and reds for the heart balloons. So I'm keeping them similar to the background. I'm sorry, I'm keeping them similar <laughs> to the mushrooms. I also color that tree stump in um, some other browns different from the hedgehog. See, I just did it different from the porcupines, but um, I ended up not using that either. So I'll just save the images that I don't use for another card, and that's going to save me time coloring down the down the road. And that's those are the images. It was actually really quick because I used the same colors for everything basically. And next, I'm just going to ink blend the background of my card. I am using Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide, picked Raspberry Distress Oxide. Dried marigold, distress oxide. Oh, before I, before I get to the dried marigold, I decided it wasn't purple enough for me up top, so I'm using a little bit of chip sapphire on top, then using the seedless preserves to blend it back out, and now I'm cleaning it up because I don't want it to contaminate my dried marigold. So now I'm using dried marigold, and at the very bottom I am using tattered rose um, just to lighten it all up and then I'm just gonna go over everything a little bit one more time just to blend the colors but it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be a perfect blend and I'm using those same colors on these uh, letters I die cut with Henry's ABC's that are gonna be part of the sentiment just a little bit of seedless preserves on the bottom then picked raspberry dried marigold chip sapphire tattered rose on top the, this was so easy. I mean, I, I did speed it up, but it was basically real time. That's how fast the letters went. And then I decided, because I have a problem, <laughs> I am a splatteraholic, to splatter everything. So I'm using water to splatter on the background and the letters, and then a little bit of white acrylic paint to also splatter on top of everything, um, just to add a little bit of interest to the background. And like I said, the blending didn't have to be perfect because I knew I was going to be splattering. And now we're going to start with the card. I've already die cut the uh, edge, the middle of the card that's going to be the mechanism on a three and a quarter by five inch piece of paper, which is why I have that up there on that cloud post it. And I've die cut the uh, rectangle with the slot in it and I've written front and back on both so that it's easy. Um, I've die cut the rectangle from acetate and then the small little rectangle from more white cardstock. And I'm going to ink blend the same way I just did. I knew this was going to go on the lower third of my card, so I'm just using picked raspberry and dried marigold so that it, it kind of is the same, it carries on the same colors as you pull it out. And I'm using the same colors again for the little tab, and that's going to cover and, and hide a little bit of the, the glue when we have this card. I'm also adding a little bit of water sprinkles, and I'm going to be doing some more white acrylic ink um, splattering too and so that it is like I said it's a seamless continuation of the scene and now it's all dry so I'm just going to start by using my bone folder and folding all of the little edges of the perforated lines towards me there's five of them and I'm just folding each one on the front towards me and then I'm going to flip it over and fold each one on the back towards me as well. And that will really get those folded lines used to moving and moving and grooving. <laughs> and now we're gonna put it together. I, I had a little bit of a brain fart in this moment, but I keep it together a little. So you use the back of everything. I'm putting the slot th the, through just one little tab. I'm gonna add some adhesive and I really want it to stick on this pull tab because that's the whole point of the flippy flappy. And I'm just showing you here that I'm putting tape on the side that's gonna fold over. So right there, the tape will fold over on that one little perforated line we folded towards ourselves earlier. I'm taking off the release paper and going to add just a tiny bit of glue, making sure none comes out of the edges because we don't want it to stick anywhere else. And I'm going to fold it over and basically flippy flappy is done, guys. <laughs> That's how easy flippy flappy is. Um, I'm just kind of testing it, 
making guiding the little edges so that they know how to fold. And now I'm gonna add some double-sided foam tape. I'm gonna double it up so it's a little bit thicker and put it along the edges of my cards, not touching the mechanism at all. And um, that will help you when you go to uh, do the pull tab and the help the pages, the little preferred lines fold and unfold. Um, here's my acetate flipper. I'm calling it the flipper. I am going to attach it the wrong way. You want the clear acetate to go towards the card, not towards the tab. Um, as you can see here, I put it right towards the tab, just like that, but duh, <laughs> that doesn't work. I don't notice yet though, guys. I don't notice yet. I will in a minute. Um, I'm adding tape to my, um, magic cover up to cover up that adhesive of that little white tab right that we have on the the flipper and this is when i notice oh yeah nothing's flipping because it's all facing the same direction <laughs> so i just quick take it off and reattach it and no no harm no foul it's all good and now you can see it flips right up in that little little area perfect flippy flappy done i am going to attach the card base that we ink blended and splattered to the um, the top of our what we just made and just a little bit of glue I ran out of glue <laughs> I mean I ran out of tape runner so I'm adding some glue and now um, now we have it done and I'm just making sure that it is working and it is uh, of course if anyone has made this you know you check it a thousand times <laughs> so that's what I was doing and I'm just attaching the whole thing to my card my card base, my card front, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it has a nice little border around it. And as you can see, it flips out. And now we're going to start just putting my card together. <laughs> and you're going to see what my process is like. At this point, I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to look. And so I'm just kind of putting things here and there and seeing what it's going to look like. And you can see it unfold as I do. Um, I knew each little hedgehog guy was going to have a uh, balloon or two. And I knew I either wanted it to look like that porcupine. Porcupine. Yes, he is. Okay, good. <laughs> I said hedgehog. I either wanted it to look like that porcupine was holding a balloon. But then I thought, oh, the, the sentiment is so mush. So I decided he was going to hold a mushroom. And I was going to decorate the tab a little bit. And so I'm attaching the balloons to the pull tab to make a little bit of a scene when you pull it. I'm going to put a little bit of grass tufts, a little bit of everywhere. At first, I thought the green was very harsh against the pinks and, and apricots and purples. But I actually really like that the green kind of breaks up the monotony of those colors. Um, I'm attaching the uh, part of the sentiment we die cut with Henry's ABCs with the jumbo glue glue pen and I am attaching my card here is where I decide that the other porcupine is going to have the sentiment the two porcupines in the card base are also popped up with foam tape because I can't help myself and I am just the other all the balloons and the mushrooms and the grass everything else is glued down I decided I did want to separate a few of those trio mushrooms so I'm just cutting off that tiny little one and putting it other places it's super um super easy to do you can't even tell that they should you know be together so it's perfect and I am just, this is my favorite part of card making is when I have all my pieces and I'm making the scene and seeing what looks better and what should go where. Um, I don't know about you. What's your favorite part? Is your favorite part making the interactive elements, which of course you all know I love, <laughs> or is it creating the scene? Is it coloring? Is it making the sentiment? I mean, I love all aspects, but when I do get to create the scenes, I, I really, I really love it. Um, okay, so that's everything. That's my card. And now I'm just going to put it down and you can see that you can see a little bit of the mushroom backside peeking up. And I thought, oh, should I cover it up with another mushroom? But then I'm like, no, no, let's not complicate it. And so all I do here is just add the little tiny arrow to the pull tab that is included in the flippy flappy die set. And my card is done. And I think it's adorable. He looks like he's standing on that little M and he just flips up out of nowhere <laughs> and the scene continues and I think it's so cute and I hope hope that you enjoyed making this with me and you saw how easy the flippy flappy was to make I am always in awe of how easy this die is because I'm always intimidated by it and it's always 
one of the easiest dies you could use. I hope that you have a great day and please be sure to check this card out on the Lawn Fawn blog. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!